So today I'm going to be talking about distribution of the population proportion. Um, earlier in the video, I gave a list of formulas and facts about this section, so make sure you copy that down. Uh, so we're going to start examples. A given population of 2,000 people, where P equals 0.52 represents a percentage of females, a sample of 85 people are chosen. Okay, so that's our situation. Can this situation be described as approximately normal? Okay. Well, for the situation to be approximately normal, we have two equations to make sure it works. We have n is less than or equal to 0 0.05 times the population. So this is our sample. Is that less than or equal to 5% of 2,000? Well, this is 100. So 85 is less than 100, check. So that's part one of checking for that. The second condition for this to be true is if NPQ is greater than or equal to 10. So NPQ is the number of people surveyed times the probability of the characteristic or success, which is 0.52 times 0.48 and we get twenty one point two one six which is also going to check out for us. So we could say yes our curve is approximately normal. Next, we want to find the mean and standard deviation of the population proportion. So the mean is easy to find. The equation is just, well, it's equal to P, which is 0.52. Then the standard deviation, which also isn't very hard to find, is the square root of P, Q, over N. So if we plug in our numbers, we get square root of P is 0.52. Remember, Q is the opposite probability in a binomial distribution where you have, say, success and failure, or characteristic and not characteristic. So this number here is 1 minus 0.52, which is 0.48. And we've already used that once, so I felt like I had to explain it. Right? This is this number is 1 minus 0.52 divided by the number sampled, which is 85. And we get our standard deviation, which is 0 0.0542. So simple enough. Now we want to find the probability that x is greater than 45 in this sample of 85 people, meaning the probability that more than 45 people are female. So then in the problem it says find this, where p hat is greater than 0.647. Well, this number is easy to find, and usually they don't give it to you. So here's how you find that. You take, to find p hat, you take x divided by um, n, which is 45 divided by 85. And that is the 0.647 we were given in this problem. So for future reference, that's how you have to find it. Now, given this number, we need to find a z-score. Because whenever we're talking about a normal distribution, we need a z-score to uh, use the normal curve in the table, given in class. So we take that p hat minus 
uh, the mean, as always, divided by the standard deviation. So we plug in 0.647 minus the mean is 0.52 divided by the standard deviation is 0.0542. is 2.34 and you only need two decimal places on this because that's where the table goes to 2.34 now we have to do one more thing with this since we're looking for the probability greater than this number we need to use Actually, now we have a z-score, so we're going to use z. z greater than 2.34 is equal to 1 minus probability of z being less than 2.34. So remember, whenever you see greater than, you go to the table and you use 1 minus that number. That you find on the table. So it's 1 minus. So it's 1 minus 0 0.9904. Okay? And we get our answer. So equals. 1 minus 0 0.9904 is 0 0.0096. Okay, so two more examples. A researcher wants to know how many people he has to survey to get an approximately normal distribution. He already surveyed five people. How many more people will he have to survey if he if the probability of success is 30% or the probability of success is 50%? So this is actually pretty easy to uh, figure out because we have this condition that n p q must be greater than or equal to 10. Okay, so all we have to do is plug in our, our givens are the 30%, which needs to be converted to a decimal, and well, he's already surveyed five people. So we're asking how many more people we have to survey. And we just plug in our P, and from P we know Q, and then we'll figure out what N is. So if we solve this equation for N, we get N equals, or N is actually greater than or equal to 10 divided by P times Q which is 10 divided by 30% as a decimal is 0.3 and Q is going to be 1 minus 0.3. So we can say 1 minus 0.3. And then this is going to be the number of people he needs to survey. But we're going to subtract the five people in the end. So we have 10 divided by 0.3 times 0.7 which is 47.6 people, but we can't say that, so we're going to say 48. So for part A here, since he's already surveyed five people, we take that 48 minus the five, he's got to survey 43 more people to get a normal approximation. Now for our 50%, we still do the same thing. We say, okay, N, P is 50%, which means Q is 50%, is greater than or equal to 10, and then just divide by those two 50%. So we get N equals 
or n is greater than or equal to 10 divided by 0.5 times 0.5, which is 40. And again, he already surveyed five people. So this is going to be 35. Then the last problem. All right, so number three, a sample of 80 is taken from a population of 12,000 people. We're gonna make P equal to 0.35. This is not good. Is the situation approximately normal? Okay, well that's this equation again. NPQ is greater than or equal to 10. So all we have to do is plug in some numbers to figure out if that's true or not. So we have N is 80. P is 0.35, and Q is the inverse of that from 1, so we have 1 minus 0.35 is 0.65, which is 18.2, which is greater than or equal to 10, so the answer is yes. We need to find the mean, which is always just p. So that's p is 0.35. Our standard deviation is the square root of p times q divided by n. So the square root of 0.35 times 0.65 divided by 80. So it's 0 0.0533. That's that one. But you need these to do something like this. Anyways, we want to find the probability that x is less than 25 people from our sample of 80 people. Okay. So the first thing we need to do is find the proportion. That's 25 people divided by 80 people. Or x divided by n. 25 divided by 85. So we get 25 divided by 85. 0 0.294. So the problem becomes Find the probability that p hat is less than 0.294. But again, that's not a z value, so we need to convert that to a z value. So we want the probability that z is less than 0.294. Actually, we need to find z first. So this is blank. We don't know this yet. So we have z equals p hat minus mu of p hat divided by standard deviation of p hat or 0.294 minus 0.35 divided by standard deviation we just found. 0 0.0533. So z is negative 0.7. And then we get that directly from the normal table. You go to the negative side and you find 0.7. So it's 0. Point here, which is 0.242. So we get 0.242. And then another one similar to this, we're going to find P 
of x being greater than 30. So 1, we need to turn this into p hat, and then we need to turn that into z. Okay, So we have p greater than or equal to, and remember p hat is just x divided by the sample, 30 divided by 8. Okay. It's 0.375. Now we need to turn that into a z value. So this is going to be the same as p. z greater than or equal to. So z is the p value, 0.375, minus 0.35, the mean divided by standard deviation of 0 0.0533. And we get there, 0 0.469. Again, when it says greater than, the table only gives us the less than values. So we take this, we can say equals, 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 equals 1 minus p of z less than 0.496 or 469, which is 1 minus. We only need two decimal places there, so we're actually going to make this 4.7. So 0.47, 4.7 is 0.681. And then we get our answer, which is 0.319. That's it for today.